Hi everybody, my name is Miss Sarah and today we're going to talk about sensory play. What is sensory play and why is it important and kind of the materials that you can use at home to, to um, participate with sensory play at home. So sensory play is when a child is using their five senses. It may not include all five senses, but at least one of their senses. So typically in school we would do sand or water or some kind of movement within the classroom to um, signify um, sensory play. Like playing with Play-Doh or playing with moon sand, something like that. Um, at home it's a lot harder, you would think, to introduce sensory play to your child, but really it's quite simple. All you would need is just a tub. You can use this kind of tub that we got at the dollar store. It's uh, just a dish pan, or you can use pretty much any kind of bin that is going to hold the material that you want to use. The reason why it's important for you to do it at home is because this is how kids are going to learn. They're going to learn how things interact, like pouring a glass of water. We all know when to stop pouring the water so it doesn't overflow, but a child may not. So getting a chance to make a mess in a controlled environment like a bin or even in a bathtub or even in a kitchen sink is going to allow them to learn those fundamental skills and get to make a mess and learn how to not make a mess. Um, so some great things that you can do is you can use some bird seed. They can dump and pour. You can hide things inside of the bird seed like foam letters or even little math cubes. You can make it a little game. They have to find the pieces. They have to count out the pieces or they have to find the letters of their name. You can just dump it right in and then when you're done you can take the little pieces that you're using out or the tools that you're using put it in a little Ziploc bag and you can use it next time. Or you can go out and you can feed the birds uh, or seed your garden. We also have things like beans, just hard beans. You can get them at the dollar store, you can get them at Wegmans. Um, just dump them in there and you can do the same concept. They can, you can either write on there if you want to make it a little more challenging um, and then they have to find a special bean or they have to find a special colored bean and count them out. What's also great is you can take flour and oil um, or baby oil and you can find recipes. I'm sure we'll share some with you. You can make your own moon sand or make your own Play-Doh. You can also just dump some flour in there and they could go ahead and they could make, pretend making cakes or cookies or anything that you wanted. And that sensory play, they're going to get that texture and they're going to be able to maybe search for something, dump and pour. Um, if you don't want to use items like bird seed or beans or flour, you can always use like spaghetti. Um, you can get it at pretty much anywhere. You can cook it or you can leave it uncooked. And again, the, put it in the bin and you can save it for a little while. If it's uncooked, you can save it for a lot longer than if it's cooked, but cooked you can do it two or three times within a week if you put it in a Tupperware bowl, um, but you won't, you won't want to keep it for more than a week. Something that also may not make a big mess would be if you have a shredder at home, you can just use your, your bills that you're shredding up, put that inside this bin, put some things inside there, or even just let them play with the shredded paper. Trust me, the kids will be entertained for hours with the shredded paper, just as it is. Um, some great tools that you can get, you can get them at the dollar store, or you can use the ones that maybe don't work so great at home. Maybe the handle's a little wobbly or something. A masher, you can mash it. You can help the kids will get fine motor dexterity out of this, and they're gonna get to play with it. Um, some funnels. They can dump water, they can dump sand, they can dump dirt, they can dump even some of these beans will fit in there. Um, and then they can dump and pour inside cups. Trust me, they're gonna love it. Even these little cups you can get at the dollar store. Um, they have little holes in them so they can, you know, sift through with the sand or even with the flour or water. Um, a whisk, you know, a spoon, an ice cream scoop, anything that you can think of that you may want to use, just a regular plastic spoon at home. The kids are going to love it because they're going to be able to use it and they're going to get that fine motor to be able to maybe scoop up the Play-Doh with it and make little balls with it. Um, they're also going to learn what the name of it is because a lot of times kids might not know what this is or they may not know what this is. So you're also going to increase the vocabulary while they're having fun and playing with it. Um, if you want to do something that increases like their full five senses, you can do something like Jell-O because it smells. Of course, they can taste it because it's completely, you know, edible. Um, 
it'll have that weird texture that they can play with. Even if you don't fully make it, it's still going to be kind of a weird texture because it's going to be granulated. Um, you can make it fully, and then they really will go to town with it. You can also use stuff like tissue paper. You can cut up a bunch of tissue paper, make them do it. Have them use the scissors and cut it up, and then let them go to town with it. Another great idea is bath time. A lot of times bath time turns into, oh, we got to wash your hair and stuff like that. So allow them to maybe take a um, laundry basket, put it in there with them, and then they can have these tools kind of floating inside the laundry basket, and they can play with the water inside there, or they can have little blocks floating around. Legos will float, um, do clothes will float. Um, I would stay away from maybe wooden ones because they might get waterlogged, but any kind of foam or anything like that you can put in that laundry basket. Let them go to town. Let them wash it with the wash, uh, with the soap, with the water. Um, not only will they get that ability to have the fine order of washing those toys, but now the toys are going to be clean as well, and they're going to have a great time in the bath. Pretty much anything that you can think of, you can do in a sensory table. Sensory play doesn't just stop when you do a specific task, too. So even when you're baking at home, you can allow your kids to maybe wash their hands and get into that dough that you're making or that cookies because they're going to get that sensory play out of that as well. A great thing to remember is allow them to have fun. Let them make the messes because when they get older, they're not going to get that opportunity to make messes anymore. They're not going to get that opportunity to see how much they can fit inside of a cup before it overflows. So allow them to do it now in a controlled environment. They're going to not only have a wonderful time, but they're going to learn those fundamental skills that everybody already knows and we don't know when we learned it, like pouring a glass of juice or putting you know, cereal inside of a bowl. They're going to learn those skills, but they're also going to increase their vocabulary, they're going to increase their awareness, and they're going to just have a great time doing it. Well, thanks for listening, and I hope you guys have a great day.